buying them because they should be really lovely and scented. Right, here we go. There's two mangoes here cut into chunks and I'm just going to put this into the blender, lid off and then in these go. And in fact, I can even smell that lovely sort of sweet perfume smell. These are really ripe and they're lovely and soft as well. So, in they go. A couple of peaches, because as I say, I'm going to make two here. I've peeled the skin off the peaches, and make sure you take all the stones out if you're putting all of this into your blender. You need the juice of an orange, and a really nice large orange juice there. Just pour that in. And then I'm using low-fat yoghurt. You can use yoghurt or you can use fromage frais whichever one of those you fancy. But this low-fat yoghurt's very good because it's got a lovely sharp flavour. So it all goes in together. And then you just give it a good whiz. Now make sure you put the lid on properly. Like that. And then I'm just going to put this into it and give it a little mix. There we are. That's it. You'll find with these, the longer you whiz it, the thinner the liquid's going to become. But that's just, I think, the way I want it there. Now I'm just going to pour this into the glasses, and then I'm going to just decorate it with a little bit of ice, and I might even put some nice fresh fruit over the top of it as well. There we are. That's it. These look pretty good. Well, let's stay with the fruit because I'm going to cook a really tasty dish again. This time, it's spiced roasted fruit. And it's one of those dishes you can make at any time of the year. And all you have to do is to choose what's freshest and best. And just look at this assortment we have here. You can serve this as a dessert right on its own. You can have it in the fridge and then serve it for breakfast with a little bit of yogurt. You can even top it with muesli. And what I love about this, this is lovely for an evening meal because you can serve it with something as simple as grilled chops. So the fruits, choose whatever you want. I'm starting off here with plums and those lovely yellow plums. Now the secret here is to have a nice assortment of textures. So these plums, I've left some of them whole and some of them I've chopped in half. I love the sort of the lovely rosy red pinkish ones, so those are going in too. And then if you come to a fruit such as this next one, which is the pear, which tends to be quite large, well then you want to chop it into quarters and then in some cases maybe break the little bits up slightly further and make them even smaller. The idea here is, look, so that all the fruit is going to sort of cook at the same time. I have loads of pears going into this, and as I said, this dish is just purely packed with vitamins and goodness. You'll have no bother getting your five a day out of this one. You can use some quite unusual ones because figs are lovely in it. But if you're buying your figs, make sure they're really firm because they don't need a lot of cooking time. But I think it's lovely just to put a little cross on the top of them like that. And then during cooking, you'll find these will open up, and I like to leave the wee stalk on them as well. Just exactly the same with the other ones. There's another one. Needs a little cross on top. There we go. And then it goes. Now the great thing about a dish like this is you don't have to use all fresh fruit. You can use a variety of dried fruits as well. And I'm just going to put in a few apricots. But you'll have no bother finding on the shelves in the supermarkets. You'll get pears, you'll get papaya. There's such a selection of those, even lovely figs and dates. And any of those are nice. So in they all go. You can even put in something like that if you like. These are nectarines. Now the nectarines are quite large, so I'm just going to put a little slit on those. Just chop it right down through the centre, and then give a little twist around, and in it goes. If you want, you can take the stones out of any of those fruits. So just chop round there. Quite a large stone in the centre of this one, so we'll just take him out. There we go. So, that's all the fruit. Now it looks like an awful lot, but believe me, this is all going to shrink down whenever you put it into the oven to cook. Over the top of that, I'm going to put some freshly squeezed orange juice. And I'm putting the zest of the orange on as well. And this is one of the handiest ways of taking it off, because if you take a zester like that and just scrape it very, very easily, you'll find that it'll come off without that bitter white part that you have underneath. In fact, when you've done this, if you've done it properly, your orange will probably still be orange, and that's exactly what you want. You need the zest here of two oranges. I've already done this. There's loads and loads there, and believe me, you'll get loads of flavour on this dish.
Now there's a little bit more flavour because I'm going to add a cinnamon stick to it. If you just sort of crack it slightly, pop it in like that, it'll impart its flavour much quicker. I've got a few cardamom seeds. Those are the tiny little seeds there that come out of the cardamom pods. Wee tiny, tiny seeds and they're so perfumed and scented, they're lovely. One other ingredient I'm adding here for flavour, and these are these little star anise. Now these again have a lovely sharp pungent flavour and they'll really impart a lot to this dish. A little bit of honey over the top, just to help the fruits on the way, just about a couple of spoonfuls, that's dessert spoonfuls, over the top of that, and that's it. That's all the ingredients you need for this dish. So it's going into the oven now to cook at 200 degrees centigrade, gas mark six, it won't take very long. It'll only take about 20 to 25 minutes. Then just spoon the syrup over the fruits during roasting and you can either serve it hot or cold, topped with yogurt for breakfast or ice cream for dessert. How about a light lunch or a snack? You know, there's nothing as handy as a sandwich, especially a warm toasted one. To me, this is the ultimate food to go. A couple of good thick doorstep slices. We're going to toast those in a moment or two. I'm using a griddle pan for this. And funny enough, you don't even need to put any oil on top of it. If you want to, you can put a wee spray on it. But I think you'll find if your griddle pan's hot enough, then it'll be fine for you. This is a lovely wholesome sandwich, as I said. It's one with crusty bread. It's going to be topped with fruits. It's got parma ham over the top of it and absolutely no butter and a real tasty dressing here. All these fruits are going over the top of that. And I'm just going to leave those just to let them almost char grill for a couple of minutes. I'm going to make a dressing to go over the top of it. And this one's made with runny honey. I've got just about a couple of tablespoonfuls of honey. And I'm putting it into the pan to warm because this is a nice warm dressing that I'm going to use. Just leave it for a few moments just to warm up slightly. And then to that I'm adding mustard. And it's the whole grain mustard that I have. And be quite generous with this. You want a good teaspoonful of that going in. I'm adding chilies to it, and I love the flavour and the heat and the fire with chilies. You can either use the red ones or use the green ones here, um, but I'm just going with the red. I've chopped them in half, taken the seeds out. And believe me, the seeds are the hottest part of them. One chilli, chopped up nice and finely, and I'm adding that to the dressing. And it'll give it a lovely colour as well. So in goes the chilli. Just cook this for a moment or two. Now, the nice thing about heating this is that you'll find the chilies will lose just a little bit of their fire and the heat. Just leave that to heat for a moment. And while that's cooking over there, I'm coming back to the apple and the pear just to turn those over. Now, they don't need to cook for very long, just long enough to let them blacken slightly and just soften. That's the dressing bubbling. I'm just going to turn the heat off that, leave that to cool down for a moment. I'm just going to turn the apple and the pear again for a second and then I'm going to toast the bread and we're ready to put this one together. This is a char grilled pear, apple and parma ham sandwich and this bread's still lovely and warm so over the top of that I'm going to pour just a little of this dressing. No butter on this one and let that just all seep down through that lovely warm bread. And then it's just a matter with any sandwich of just piling everything together. So on with the fruit. The lovely sort of crusty slices of apple and pear. Loads of those. As I said, I have an apple and a pear here all together. So there's another good portion, maybe even two. Good layer of that over the top. A little bit more dressing to sort of layer this as you go along. And this is even nicer, I think, if the dressing's just slightly warm. And then it's parma ham that I'm using. Now that's that lightly smoked Italian bacon that doesn't need any cooking. And you buy it in slices like this. Now they are quite big, so just tear them apart like that. They come apart so nice and easily. And it's so easy just to twist around and put over the top of your sandwich like that. Just another little bit here, like that. And then just a few more little pieces. And then finish it off with more apple and more pear, just on top. A little bit of dressing as well. This is a real tasty filling one. A little bit more of the warm dressing just going over the top. And then I like to garnish this with a little bit of lettuce. And the lettuce that I'm using for this one is lamb's lettuce. Probably one of the nicest and the mildest flavoured lettuce that you can get. A little bit at the side. And that's it. So, a real tasty sandwich for a good snack.
delicious. After the break, more ideas for a light lunch and a more substantial meal. Mmm, Jenny Bristow Light in association with Gold in the Moser. Perfect. Jenny Bristow Light in association with Gold in the Moser. These noodles, you know, they're irresistible to young and old alike. And I think it has to be because they're so fast and they're easy to cook. Well, these ones, I'm going to serve these with loads of vegetables and a nice tasty curry sauce. These are rice sticks, and you know there are three stages in the cooking of noodles. The first one is the cooking, then you refresh them to stop them cooking, and then you reheat them. Now, to start these off with, I'm going to put them into a pot of boiling water, just with a little bit of salt in it, and in the rice sticks go. And they take such a short time to cook. In fact, only about two minutes. <laughs> That's them ready. They've been cooking now for about two minutes. I've just got about six ounces of noodles here. I'm cooking enough for two people. And now that they're boiled, I'm just going to drain the water off them, just into a colander. And then to stop them cooking, just run cold water over the top of them. And then these can be left just to sit and then we'll reheat them up whenever we're ready to use them. Well, it's a whole assortment of vegetables that I'm going to cook to serve with these noodles. And I'm going to cook them in a wok. And you know, you don't have to have this wok filled with oil in order to cook them to get flavour into them. In fact, if you want to be really healthy, this is all you need. Just a quick squirt of a little bit of olive oil round the inside of your pan and you'll find that'll be quite enough to cook them going to get the flavour into this dish by a few of these nice ingredients. The first one is a little bit of ginger, either ginger or galangal. Galangal is a slightly milder flavoured ginger and it's lovely, so you can use whichever you like. A bit of heat going in in the form of two chilies. These are the green ones, which I've chopped up really finely. I've taken the seeds out, I'm not that brave, because the seeds make it very, very hot. So give those a little toss round. Now, look at the assortment of vegetables we have in this one. I've got about six to eight spring onions here, and I've chopped those up nice and coarsely, nice sort of long strips like that. Now, if you are preparing any vegetables, it's a good idea to use a good sharp knife, because if you bruise the cells of the vegetables, you're going to release an enzyme, and that attacks the vitamin C. And after all, this is one of our main sources and supplies of vitamin C, really lovely fresh vegetables. So, spring onions in. We're just going to toss those round for a moment. In with these munch two peas. I haven't even chopped them up. I've left them nice and chunky. If you want to add a little bit of bacon, a little bit of cooked sausage, or even a few prawns, there's no reason why you couldn't put those in as well. Now I'm going to add the mushrooms to it. I've got just our ordinary little button mushroom, some of the nice brown cat ones, and then these slightly more unusual oyster mushrooms. I've got about eight ounces all together, and those are all going in. Be careful if you're cooking mushrooms, don't be tempted to put any salt in at this stage because that draws all the moisture out of them and you'll find they'll shrivel right in front of your eyes. Again, just keep those cooking on the heat. And this is the last one we're going to put in. This is pak choy, lovely Chinese vegetable. Again, packed full of colour and flavour. I've just chopped those in half. You don't need to steam them or do anything with them. We're just going to put those in last. But we need a little bit of flavour here going into this one. And so I'm going to add some of this really good tasty fish sauce. This acts as a great seasoning. So a good squirt of that. Good shake of soy sauce as well. That's just about two dessert spoonfuls. This is the liquid in which this is going to cook. And I'm also adding just about a good heat teaspoonful of curry paste. Now this is the mild curry paste, it's the Thai one, which will give these vegetables a really nice color. Ready now for the other ones. As I said, these pak choy, they haven't been steamed. They will find they'll cook here just with the heat coming off the other ones. That's it. Keep the temperature nice and high while those are cooking. And I'm going to leave that for a moment or two and make a nice sauce to go over the top of this. This is a really simple sauce. And I've got here just about 200 grams of yogurt all together. That's just about half a pint. Just put it into your saucepan. And again, it's a curry sauce, so I'm using more of the curry paste. 
You can add as much or as little of this as you like. You can go for this nice sort of ready orangey one, or if you prefer the green one, you can use that. A good sort of heat teaspoonful again, a little bit more if you like a bit of fire in it, and then just give that a stir around. Now, if you use yogurts and sauces, it can tend to do all sorts of funny things. It can separate out. And if you want to serve this sauce warm, then you'll probably find you'll have to stabilize it. Now, that sounds awfully complicated, but it's nothing more than adding about 25 grams or an ounce of corn flour blended with two tablespoonfuls of water. And if you just mix those together slightly, like that, until the corn flour and the water are really well blended, then if you pour this in and mix it round, it's going to stop the yogurt separating out, especially if you want to serve this sauce warm. And that's exactly what I want to do. Just stir it round, bring the yogurt almost up to boiling point. It only needs to just heat gently for about two minutes and that's our yogurt sauce almost ready. Back to these ones because these are almost ready now. Look at this. There's the pak choy <coughs> that is just starting to wither down. All the other lo lovely vegetables are ready. So I'm going to turn the heat off that. Just leave the sauce to simmer. We're ready now to refresh the noodles. I'm going to pour a kettle of boiling water over the top of them. That'll make them hot. And then we're ready to put this dish together. So it's rice sticks on the plate, lots of vegetables, loads of sauce over the top. And I'm going to add just a few rashers of bacon just to beef it up a little bit. These are assortment of sausages. Some of them are pork and apple. The others are those really flavoursome Italian ones, flavoured with herbs. You know, I just love them. And so do most of the kids I know. But I'm going to cook these. I'm going to serve them with another real family favourite, and that's a risotto. I'm going to cook these sausages from the grill pan. So on the go, turn up the temperature on those. And I'm just going to let those cook nicely until they become lovely and crispy and golden brown. Now, while they're cooking, I'm going to make this risotto. And this is one, as I said, that's so flavoursome and full of lots of lovely spring vegetables. Just a hint of olive oil in the pan. That's all you need. There's loads of flavour in this one. Starts off with a little bit of chilli. And I've just got a green one here, chopped up nice and finely. Seeds taken out of that one. And I love the chilli in this for a little bit of heat. So, in that goes. I'm adding spring onions to it. Four dessert spoonfuls of the vegetables here of the spring onions, chopped up nice and finely, so they go in all at once and just toss them around. Now you only want to just coat them at this stage, and once you get those starting to coat, then we're ready to add the rice to this dish. Now this is an interesting rice. It's the risotto rice, or the arborio rice. Looks like many of the other ones, apart from the fact that the grain is just slightly flatter, and it's quite a hard, tough little grain. But it's amazing the way this cooks. Once you put it in, it's going to become really nice and creamy. But it all goes in together, all at once, like that. And then you just toss it round in the pan, just until the grains start to glisten. There we go. Looks lovely. But once they're coated like that, we're ready to start and add a little bit of flavour to it. I'm adding the juice of a lemon, and that's just a freshly squeezed lemon, so that goes in next. And I'm adding a little bit of white wine to it. Now, the white wine gives this a really nice, savoury, bitter, sharp flavour. And again, you'll need here just about a quarter pint. The interesting thing about making a risotto is the way in which you add the liquid to it. Because normally when you're cooking rice, you have the pot of water on, in goes the rice, and away you go and you leave it to cook for about eight to ten minutes. This one's different. needs a little bit of attention. Because once you add liquid, you've got to let it absorb it. Then you add a little bit more, and then when that's absorbed, then you keep adding some more. I've got about a pint of stock all together, and it's just a nice light vegetable stock. So we're going to add a little bit of this at this stage, just about a, a quarter of it, just to stir round. And I'm just going to leave that to simmer there until the rice absorbs the liquid. And then I'm going to add another little bit. Those are cooking nicely. And so is this risotto. Now, that first batch of stock that I've added to that is absorbed. I've got about 10 ounces of rice here. That's about 270 grams. And for that amount of rice, you're going to need almost a pint of stock. So, first batch in. Going to add some more. Just a gentle stir around. And just leave that to absorb as well. That batch is now just about absorbed. So, we're ready for the last lot of it. So, all together now, that's a pint. 570 mils of stock that we've added to this. 
Now this is the stage where the vegetables go in as well because they're going to cook in the liquid that we have here. Now, four portions of, fr of vegetables for you here. I've got four ounces of munch two peas, about 110 grams. Four ounces of lovely little fresh garden peas. Four ounces of courgettes, chopped up into little dice with the skin left on. And one of my favorites of all of them. And that's the tiny little spears of baby asparagus. And I'm just putting those in last of all, just over the top. Now when these go in, these are just going to almost steam and cook in the rice and in the liquid that you have there. But we need to add a little bit more flavor to it as well. So at this stage, I'm going to just put a little sprinkling of lemon. A little bit of lemon rind over the top of it. Just going to leave that now and let the lovely flavor of that just sort of mix through these vegetables and with the rice. That's it, the end of the stock absorbed. I'm just going to finish this off with just a couple of tablespoonfuls of really nice thick cream, just over the top, and just let that mix in to the risotto. And who could resist this bowl of tangy, creamy risotto rice, full of green vegetables, served with plump sausages, and garnished with loads of Parmesan cheese. Another way to get an extra portion of fruit into the younger members of the family is that after-school snack. Cut a muffin in half on toast, arrange sliced bananas over the top, sprinkle with the juice of half a lemon and a little honey, and then dust with an ounce of demerara sugar, a little coconut, and brown below a hot grill until caramelised. And just serve it with a spoonful of yoghurt. Cheers! Tea, anyone? Jenny Bristow Light, in association with Golden Mimosa, the connoisseur's tea.